be absolute for death. Either death or life shall thereby be the sweeter. Reason thus with life. If I do lose thee, I do lose a thing that none but fools would keep. A breath thou art, servile to all the sky influences, that dost this habitation, where thou keepest hourly afflict. Merely, thou art death's fool, for him thou laborest by thy flight to shun, and yet runnest toward him still. Thou art by no means noble. For all the accommodations thou bearest are nursed by baseness. Thou art by no means valiant. For thou dost fear the soft and tender fork of a poor worm. Thy best of rest is sleep. And that thou oft provokest, yet grossly fearest thy death, which is no more. Thou art not certain. For thy complexion shifts to strange effects after the moon. If thou art rich, thou art poor. For like a ass whose back with ingots bows, thou bearest thy heavy riches, but a journey and death unloads thee. Friend has thou none. For thine own bowels, which do call thee sire, the mere effusion of thy proper loins, do curse the gout, the serpigo, and the room for ending thee no sooner. Thou hast nor youth nor age, but, as it were, an after-dinner sleep. Dreaming on both. For all thy blessed youth becomes as aged, And doth beg the alms of palsied eld. And when thou art old and rich, Thou hast neither heat, affection, limb, Nor beauty to make thy riches pleasant. Yet what's in this that bears the name of life? For in this life lie hid more thousand deaths. Yet death we fear that makes these odds all even.